Have you ever had another driver make you mad while driving? There's new terminology that's become part of our daily driving lives today, and it's called road rage. What is it? You've probably seen it or been exposed to it, but exactly what does road rage mean? It means a person while driving doesn't control his or her emotions. Everyone has the potential for road rage. It's an attitude more than anything. It's hostility behind the wheel. It's a human trait that exists in all of us. We're all out there on the road fighting for space, and when others get in the way, it becomes war. Generally, all human beings think of themselves as being good or better than other persons, and they just don't like the thought of losing or being bested by another person. These thoughts are magnified behind the wheel of a motorized vehicle. Mother Nature kicks in, and your ego gets in the way of civility. That's why when you see a car approaching you to overtake or pass you, you have a tendency to speed up just a little bit. You don't like people passing you because you're competitive and don't like to lose. When you see a vehicle that's tailgating, you're upset because that vehicle is threatening your safety. It's natural to feel this way. Rationalization is when you cut in front of someone and think that's okay because you just had to get into the other lane. When someone cuts in front of you, you're upset, really upset. Road rage is something that's learned in childhood. At early ages, once youngsters entered the vehicle, they learned from their parents how to behave behind the wheel. By the time these children grow up and are allowed to operate vehicles, they have a good grasp on aggressive driving techniques and bad mental attitudes. What's the result? When you combine youth, impatience, and all these learned experiences, you have a very aggressive group of young drivers. Young people have a tendency to think that nothing could ever happen to them anyway. They believe themselves invincible. They believe they can operate their vehicles better than professional race car drivers. You need to steer clear of this youthful group's way or you're in trouble. Even those paying for driving lessons find out quickly during their driving sessions that speeding, tailgating, and cutting in front of others is the way people drive. Someday their aggressive behavior and attitude may mature into good drivers, but often it never does. As we stated earlier, road rage is an attitude. Right now, when you get into your vehicle, you're prepared for the worst. You expect bad things to happen. You know there's going to be traffic jams, construction projects, heat, cold, bad weather, and, of course, poor drivers who drive too slow, too fast, or just don't know what they're doing behind the wheel. You have the old people to worry about, the teenagers, big trucks, idiots, men drivers, women drivers, pedestrians, and all the things that make driving dangerous. And it's war. You know what to expect, so you're prepared with the adjusted attitude of a road warrior. Here's one road warrior you don't want to irritate. The highway is no place for weapons. We do not support guns or other weapons on the highway. We've mentioned attitude and asked the question, can it be changed? The answer is yes but you have to prove to yourself that it can be changed. Take the challenge for just one driving session. The very next time you operate a vehicle, just say to yourself that nothing is going to upset you. Absolutely nothing. If people want to pull in front of me, I'll let them in and I'll smile while they're doing it. Sure, deep inside you'd like to strangle them, but for this test, you're not going to get upset at anything. Adjust your attitude just this one time. Nothing is going to upset you for this test. Let them do their worst, but you're not going to holler, scream, honk your horn, or try to run them off the road. Nothing is going to bother you during this test period. Try this attitude for one driving period as a test. If you have the attitude that nothing will upset you, you'll find that road rage is non-existent on your part. Exactly how long you can make this adjustment is another story, but it serves to point out that attitudes can be changed. If you really try this for one driving session, you'll see that you'll feel better, less frustrated, and you'll arrive at your destination at about the same time. If you take this test seriously, you'll find that your health will also improve. Perhaps you could adjust your attitude at least one day a week that nothing will bother you. Then as you feel better, Try two, three.
three, four days, and you may find yourself cured. Now what happens when your actions create road rage in the other driver? You cut in front of another vehicle, and the other driver becomes livid and starts honking his horn and yelling at you. Well, try not to do those things that create road rage in the other driver. There has been much research on the subject, and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has found certain behaviors seem unusually likely to enrage other drivers. Let's look at some realistic prevention techniques in reducing road rage and poor driving attitudes based upon this research. We believe this list will touch a nerve in many of you drivers out there. One, cutting off. When you merge, make sure you have plenty of room. Use your turn signal to show your intentions before making the move. You should be able to see the other vehicle's bumper in your rearview mirror before you cut in front of someone. If you make a mistake and accidentally cut someone off, try to apologize with a friendly gesture. If someone cuts you off, slow down and give them enough room to merge into your lane. Be nice. Two, driving slowly in the left lane. If you're in the left lane and someone wants to pass, move over and let him or her by. Use the far left lane for passing only. It's just simple courtesy to move over and let other drivers by, even though they want to break the law by speeding in the passing lane. Three, tailgating. Drivers get angry when they are followed too closely. Allow at least a two to four second space between your car and the car ahead. If you don't understand this two to four second rule, you should learn it quickly. Basically, you pick out a stationary object ahead of you and count 1,001, 1,002. And if you've counted two seconds before you reach this stationary object, then that is the proper distance between vehicles. Large vehicles such as 18-wheelers and trash trucks should use the four-second rule. In poor weather, you need greater space between vehicles. Four, before cutting in front of a vehicle, you should be able to see the front bumper or headlights of the car behind you in your rearview mirror. If you believe another car is driving too slowly and you're unable to pass, pull back and allow more space, not less. That way, if the car does something unexpected, you'll have time to get out of the way. If you feel you're being followed too closely, signal and pull over to let the other driver go by. You'll find the two to four second rule does work. Five gestures. Almost nothing makes another driver angrier than an obscene gesture. Avoid making any gestures that might anger another driver, even harmless expressions of irritation, such as shaking your head. Don't honk your horn at the offending driver. Never flash your lights at a driver that has made you mad. Six, courtesy. Signal every time you merge or change lanes, and whenever you make a turn, use your horn rarely, if ever. If you and another driver see a parking place at the same time, let that person have it. When you respond this way, after a while, be my guest becomes your automatic response, and you won't be as offended by other drivers' rudeness. Again, this is nothing more than attitude. Attitude plays a major role in road rage. 7. Don't engage. One angry driver can't start a fight unless another driver is willing to join in. You can protect yourself against aggressive drivers by refusing to become angry with them. A person who is angry can do things they may later regret. Keep cool at all times. 8. Avoid eye contact. If another driver is acting angry with you, don't make eye contact. Looking or staring at another driver can turn an impersonal encounter between two vehicles into a personal duel. When it gets personal, it can get out of hand quickly. 9. Get help. If you believe the other driver is following you or is trying to start a fight, get help. Use your cell phone to call police or drive to a place where there are people around. Use your horn to get someone's attention. This will usually discourage an aggressor. Do not get out of your car and do not go home. You don't want a potentially dangerous person knowing where you live. 10. Attitude Adjustment The most important actions you can take to avoid aggressive driving take place inside your head. By changing your approach to driving, you can make every trip more pleasant. Don't get upset at the things others do. Keep control. Watch how you drive. 
Much of the time, people think they are obeying all the driving laws. They're being courteous and are being a good citizen. In reality, they do things that absolutely enrage other drivers, and they often have no idea this is happening. When slowing down to turn, think about the person behind you. They're in a hurry, and when you slow down, their temperament rises, but they understand that you want to turn, so it's not a major problem. However, when you have no consideration for the person behind you by being too slow to turn, there's trouble. When turning, do it safely, but don't waste a lot of time. Driving slowly in the passing lane is another irritant to drivers. You should be commended for driving the speed limit, but stay to the right side of the road and let others pass. Be alert at stoplights. This means don't run the yellow light and stop at red lights. Next on the irritant list is for drivers waiting for the light to change to green and seeming to be in a daze or not paying attention. You should always check for cross traffic, which may be speeding through the caution light. But when the light turns green and it's safe to do so, your vehicle should start to move. There may be five or ten vehicles that want to get through the green light before the yellow caution light appears. When all the little things build up inside drivers, they take it out on others while driving. Why is driving at night so difficult? Well, for one thing, it's dark and you can't see as well. This is the time to slow down and keep your headlights on dim for cars approaching you from the opposite lane. If you keep your headlights on bright, you're blinding other drivers. Learn how to drive safely at night. When driving at night or the early morning in an area where wild animals roam, slow down and be cautious. Deer and other animals can create serious accidents. Just be aware of what you do while driving and think about the other driver. Try to understand their position as well, and you'll be a long way in making your driving experience much more pleasant and safer. Be the one with the good attitude, and you'll end up the winner. Guaranteed. We've covered a lot of ground in this short program, but the objective has been to make you aware of potential hazards on the road. Often good drivers make mistakes and create tension among other drivers. With so many people operating vehicles, it's difficult to tell the good drivers from the bad drivers, but they're easy to recognize on the road. What can you do to protect yourselves? Think about other drivers so as not to cause them grief by driving too slow in the passing lane or improperly turning. Don't tailgate or cut in front of other cars. Never give obscene gestures or try and scold other drivers for their rudeness or poor driving. Learn to control your emotions and make it a habit to maintain the attitude that nothing is going to upset me today while I'm driving. A good attitude is perhaps the most important part of safe driving. Your job is to drive safely and be courteous to other drivers, even though they are rude, insensitive, or poor drivers. Avoid the challenges or confrontations of an aggressive driver. And of course, support law enforcement's efforts to rid the streets and highways of this menace. Oh yes, if you see an expensive car and it's taking up two parking spaces, don't worry, it's probably a lawyer who specializes in automobile accidents and injuries. Well, once again, if the driver's not under any stress, and let's make an assumption for a moment that the driver is a professional driver with many years of experience and knowledge of traffic problems, he or she, it should not bother them. Where you have, where you have these situations arise, and number one with road rage is, he or she that maybe is doing the illegal things right and left is probably under too much stress, probably hasn't had adequate rest, and is causing these situations, well, a professional driver is going to say, hey, there's something wrong with that guy, and I'm just going to slow down and let him go on his merry way. And I don't know how many times you see it happen where people make unsafe lane changes in front of heavy equipment, not realizing how long it takes to stop a large piece of equipment. Uh, the driver that just slows the bus down or the tractor trailer down and allows the, the uh, person that's causing this problem to go on his or her merry way, then it's over and said and done with. But you have to be understanding and you have to be alert of what you're doing. And a driver that's not alert is the one that has problems on the highway. Well, no, I don't get upset. I feel sorry for those aggressive drivers. Apparently, they're just selfish and they think they are the only ones driving on the road.